Welcome to Vivi Talks. I'm Vivian Arts. Join me in celebrating 100 talented female musicians from my last album, Type of Thing. Empowering female cacao farmers in Congo's Virunga State Park and restoring the rainforest. Delve into the musical journeys, creative processes, and unique perspectives of these talented women that were involved in the making of this album. Today I'm talking to Lodovica Bortoni. Italian violinist, improviser, composer, educator Ludovica Bortoni has performed worldwide as both a soloist and a chamber musician. Based in New York City, she finds herself in a multitude of musical settings, from premiering new works of chamber ensembles, to collaborating with theaters, to performing her own jazz quartet. Listen to our conversation as we talk about how she moved from the little tiny city of Udine in Italy to Boston to New York and about making her new album. Welcome, Ludovica, to my official podcast. It's a pleasure to know you and to present you to whoever is listening. Um, I'm so excited to have you here. I'd love to learn a little bit more about your background. Where are you from? What did you do? What did you get here? Um, yeah, what's happening? Well, thank you. Thank you for having me here, even if we are just like 20 minutes walk away from each other. <laughs> it's fun to be online <laughs> yeah. together and talk one-to-one. Um, a little bit about my background. Well, I come from the northeast of Italy, and that's where I grew up and studied music. And um, I started a conservatory when I was a kid, you know, like pre, at the time it was like really conservatory and you could enter as a kid. And I just fell in love with the violin because I was going to this like summer camps. I was a pianist mm -hmm. and I was going to summer camps with other kids. Um, and because I was a pianist, I couldn't play with them in orchestra. So one year I came back and I was like, ah, I need to play the violin. <laughs> and um, so I auditioned for the conservatory with violin. Uh, even if I didn't play it, they give you like a, a test, like it's an attitude. I don't know if this word exists. It's like they see if you could be good at it, whatever. You're motivated. Or motivated, you know. yes. Or there is something that for some reason would not work on the instrument. Um, and um, yeah, and then I did my my undergrad and, and master over there in violin performance. I was also working with a symphonic orchestra of my region. I, I auditioned when I was very young and um, somehow got in. What city so, is that? <laughs> It's called Udine. Uh, it's in the northeast and it's like equidistant from the Adriatic Sea and the Alps. So mm -hmm. it's like 45 minutes, one hour. Um, and also to the border with Slovenia, Austria, and in like one hour from Venice. So it's like this tiny region in the northeast where um, it's like a crossing path, like a lot of like you need to go to Milan or Venice or or Ljubljana, Vienna. It's like a very, a yeah, it's like a place where a lot of, um, there is a lot of movement, let's say, and historically too. And also with the world war, the, the border changed. So it has a special, um, special laws because it's on the border. So there are different languages mm -hmm. closer to the borders and, um, um, it's a quite of a special region because it's tiny and um, nature wise is incredible. Now that I'm far away, I can tell you that I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, oh my God, it was, the sea is there. The mountains are there. There are so many yes. rivers and lakes. Uh, you can walk, you, you need the city, you, you can go not far. You know, it's like, it's very, very beautiful and not, and not expensive because it's not as known as other areas of Italy. And then, so it's beautiful, but it's tiny. <laughs> so after, after my master, I mean, I was already traveling a lot because I am very lucky to have friends from all over the world. And a very good friend of mine was already living in New York City. And she would like tell me, hey, you have to go check out this summer program or this festival here and there. So I did um, this workshop in jazz and creative music at Banff mm -hmm. um, in 2011. And basically that experience really like 
inspired me to try to do something different with music because I was literally doing mostly orchestra and I was not really like it. There are, of course, some programs that are amazing and playing music is always like, um, it's amazing to be able to do that as a job, but you know, also playing the orchestra, not always you can express yourself in the way maybe you want to. So um, that workshop um, really opened up and the desire was like, okay, I need to do something about this. Um, so I auditioned for Berkeley. I, I did audition in other schools in Europe, but I feel like that the main difference was a little bit how in Europe, they're a little bit like this. They don't, they're not very open-minded of what you can do. So I, I got a lot of no's, like it's too late for you to uh, start doing improvised music or jazz or so it was just like, no. Mm -hmm. Instead, Berkeley gave me the chance of giving me a scholarship and being like, okay, let's see, let's do it. So I, I moved to Boston and I did, um, I focused on jazz composition. I studied with uh, Ayn Inserdo and, um, and all the teachers, which are like, I've met so many great people. I moved to Boston, but I finished in two years um, mm. doing also some, I started my OPT, which is this like um, being able to work before you graduate um, so that I could do some some work related to music. Berkeley was actually really helpful also with that because um, every time they had a concert, they would get me to play for events or recording session. And then decided to do the move to New York City as all my friends were already here and they were like, what are you doing there? <laughs> come down, come down. And it's scary, but it was actually the best decision because yeah, here things just move at a different yes. rhythm and a different pace. Yeah. yeah. It's um so it, yeah, it has been a journey and now this is my eleventh year away from home. I definitely didn't think I would live for so long. Like I left, you know, with one suitcase of black clothes thinking, okay, at least I don't have to think what I'm wearing. <laughs> Everything is like just constant dresses. Yeah. Some jeans. Um, <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, New York has, has been good. Um, I've been in Brooklyn for a while now. I've seen the community. There are different communities of musicians. So even if like it's so big, you can feel part of something depending on where you are. And, um, and, and also starting playing my music that for, for sure helped me mm -hmm. also connect to, um, to other people around here. And, um, yeah. And a few years ago, because I, I did just comp, I wrote a bunch of music and I wanted to record it. And then the pandemic happened. I was just starting to have, get the band together, but then pandemic happened and we were mostly stuck here in Brooklyn. So at some point, um, my friend pianist Marta Sanchez was like, well, let's do it anyway, let's record. So we did when we did go to the studio, uh, October 2020. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we recorded and I actually ended up releasing super late. But it's almost a year, which is the same day of, of your album, we have the right. same release day, which is coming up March 3rd, it's gonna be a year which is crazy. <laughs> and I must say, I really love your album. You said that, I mean, Thank it you. was totally worth the wait. <laughs> and <laughs> it you. was not your fault waiting because, you know, there's so many different components that, that it, Yeah, uh, there are definitely crazy. components that are out of our... Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your creative process. How do you approach writing? How, how did you came came with this? And I mean, I also want to hear about your next project because we... Yeah. We saw the preview of it and so but first yes tell me about your credit mm, I think at least when I was when I was working on that first project it all started mostly from string writing mm -hmm. but because I, I am more comfortable in that environment or I was more comfortable in that environment and um, what helped me one was pressure 
I had to do it. Um, and two, I had like some little exercises that at the time I would do, and I should probably do it again because right now I am in a moment of like, I want to write something new, but I can't, <laughs> you know, when you are like a little bit stuck. What's next? Yeah. yeah. So there are like, um, there were definitely little like exercises that I, um, I did that were, or like um, things that we would, um, we were working class for big band or like mm -hmm. for very large ensembles. And then I would bring it to the string quartet. So initially I actually wrote mostly for string quartet. Mm -hmm. And then because there was one piece that I extended to the rhythm section with the piano, I was like, what if I really do everything also with the, the large ensemble? And, um, and at that point, for sure, it helped uh, a lot the, the phase in which I, I was playing with people here. Um, a lot of people like um, were really helpful, like giving suggestion here, maybe you want this more than that. Mm -hmm. Again, I never wrote for bass, piano and drums uh, in that environment. So it was like hearing from them, from the musicians um, was really um, a great thing. And, um, and then there were, you know, like some little inspiration from past melodies that I would take and transform past meaning uh, popular or like from, from when I was growing up or yeah, from my background uh, in my region. They, in, in that album, there is a lot of like past and, and, and present. So there were all these little reference to my region, but also um, the new music I was listening and, uh, to and so the influences of Brazilian music and funk music and, um, mm -hmm. and jazz, but always like with my voice, because again, <laughs> my, my past in classical music is so strong that for sure in that album, you, you can hear it. Um, yeah, I, I tried some Bach chorales kind of like, uh, feel and, um, and then we change and with the new projects, uh, you, you lose what you did and, and you start new things. And, <laughs> but that time that was a little bit of, of how it went. Um, a little bit of being pushed by, I have to finish this by the end of the semester and then remodeling based on the musician I was playing with. Um, mm. And then, yeah, doing little writing exercises with or without instruments and, um, and then apply it and see how it would turn out with them. Cool. And how about your new projects? That's a totally different band, right? Totally different band and it's done. Like I'm literally just sitting on it. Meaning I try to look for some labels. I was not very pushing, but I will go back pushing <laughs> again. Mm -hmm. um, the project uh, is um, involved. So it's, it's probably a little bit more, less classically um, inspired and um, the music is inspired by conversations with immigrants, um, female identifying immigrants in New York City. Mm -hmm. And of course, it starts from me. It started when during the pandemic, I was stuck here and I was thinking, I cannot leave. I cannot go see my family. Um, what if I uh, end up stuck outside? Um, some people were saying, oh, you can stop in Mexico coming back or you can go in Croatia coming. But, you know, it's like it was scary and, and, and expensive. It's just like so I didn't do it and I stayed here. But then I was thinking about um, there were all the bands and still my passport was more powerful. I mean, it is. It was more giving me um, much more than a passport of someone from Iran or I mean, I'm saying Iran could be so many other places that um, um, there are different degrees of where you can go with it. Um, 
so that's where it started the idea um, of talking about these different experiences and um, and how we bring these different experiences in this in this city and we make this city all this like oh you're not a new yorker you should even go to a high school here ah whatever yes <laughs> i do teach, have the experience of teaching in, in public school so that may, might be enough and if i took that uh job it was also because someone else w didn't want to take it <laughs> i don't know i feel like um there are some jobs that are really really challenging like um being a teaching artist in uh in public schools and um and still is good because I can I can come here with uh, my visa and my you know like I I, I have access to all that um, while there are people that have no paperwork or stories that are very different and um, so I composed a bunch of um, different tunes I uh, wrote for violin flugelhorn tenor saxophone piano, bass, and drums. Mm -hmm. And I did think a little bit of who I wanted in the band before finishing the arrangements. And also in this case, I had a lot of help. Um, we did a, a few um, rehearsals of like, hey, this range is not the best for the flugel or like trying to find the best the fit. But I, w I was really intrigued about the blend of sounds of violin, flugel, and tenor. And, uh, and I'm really happy about it because it's just like, it's beautiful. And, uh, and the musicians that I involved also are incredible and different and they bring their own uh, identity to it. So there is Milena Casado, Julieta um, Eugenio, uh, Marta Sanchez, and Tyrone Allen and JK, John Cook Kim on drums. Um, we did everything together in um, in the course of like a few months like you know some rehearsal here and there and mm -hmm. then we cranked it up uh, towards november when we recorded and um i also sing in two songs i wrote mm -hmm. lyrics i'm like what and i did one arrangement of um a egberto gismonchi tune so i always have like one arrangement of one song um and in this album i also tried a collaboration and i say tried because i mean i did but it was like until we did it i didn't know what was gonna happen um i collaborated with a sound creator like an electronic um, she's um her name is Cleo reed and uh, i met her with the john baptiste um, when we were doing american symphony and she created soundscapes for american symphony mm -hmm. and um she also went to berkeley so it's like but younger generation so it was like kind of uh interesting to get to work with her she's a new yorker and um she basically created this um uh, electronic tracks using some of the interviews, the, some of this meeting with the these um, women that I met, or uh -huh. um, I also had uh, someone telling me a poetry in Arabic um, or in um, in other languages, a conversation in Spanish. So she used these voices. She used some of like I recorded some viola and she sampled it, and then I did a longer improvisation on top of it and and it was really fun and great and i think it really likes it gives like um even more identity to these like voices of like um voices of women yeah so it was like it's it's fun it was fun i don't want to sit on it for too long because what happens when you wait too long is that then you are like oh, i don't want to play this music anymore <laughs> but at the same time, again, January, uh, like I finished Mix and Master in, in December, also because I was <coughs> supported by Café Royale grant. So I, mm -hmm. I had to finish by December. Um, so January, you know, like uh, with the surgery, etc., I I had to slow down everything. And, um, and now I'm going to be back. And, you know, I'm going to look outside, send some emails and 
If not, they'll just self-release it. It's like, yeah, I, it's yeah. possible, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, I totally recommend it. <laughs> yeah, I know you. You definitely have the experience. <laughs> yeah, don't get me started on that. Yeah, I strongly believe we can do everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. I want to hear a little bit more about women, because obviously you already mentioned you have a like focus on women in your projects. I, I love to mm -hmm. hear, first of all, why women or. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think until I came to the States, I didn't realize how much sexism I grew up surrounded by and mm. also lived on my skin. Um, I thought it was normal. And also on the work ground, um, comments or mocking or it, it was bad. So I just started thinking about the fact that we managed to do things, incredible things, even in environments that are not very uh, supportive to us. And um, and and again, it, we all have different experiences. And I think, you know, like sex, racism, sexism, these problems, xenophobia are, you can find them everywhere in different mm -hmm. degrees and also with different shades because each country has a different history. Um, I think Italy in particular, sexism is one of the biggest issues. Um, my hometown was um, a military home. Like when I grew up, you still had um, they base. still had the military, they still had the, the military, oh God, how would you call it? When you have to go to do the service. Yeah, duty. Uh, uh, duty, thank you. I, I missed right. that word. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so it, the they boys had, had to go. Boys had to go and my hometown was like one of the center where um, they, you know, they would do the training. The training. So mm -hmm. Saturday afternoon was the day in which they had the the day off or the and basically the entire town which is like a cute venetian style downtown with like open squares with the um, steps where you can sit like romantic romantic of like a hundred boys like in 19 or 20 sitting there harassing any girl that passed by like I literally grew up I with me getting out, for... yeah, cat calling, getting out of the conservatory and walking by and being like bah, 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 the entire time since I was 13. And then you enter the orchestra and because you are the youngest woman, some older colleagues feel like that they can say things either behind your back or even for you to hear it that are nasty. And uh, and somehow you still do your best, you still do your job, and um, and then I came to this country and I saw that you know here is a little bit different, and um, and it, the racial aspect is much bigger. Of like my my northeastern town at the time was not very diverse. Like I had friends from different culture um, and different origin, but maybe now is getting uh, more diverse here. The sexism and the racism is so intricate and um, and I noticed, yeah, it would be important to really talk more about it and mm -hmm. and even like talk more about it, you know, like um, I just recently subbed for a, a show, an off-road show, uh, talking about pregnancies. And and it's literally a show only about pregnancy. And there are different women talking about mm -hmm. their different experience. They are, there are different characters. Like one actor does two or three characters at the same time. And 
if we don't start talking about these things, it's not important. But without these things, like there is no society. Yeah. Like it's the core, you know. Yeah, we need to start talking. About um. It. Yeah. So. And you know, I mean, I'm a woman. I cannot talk for <laughs> other people. Um. Yeah, other genders experience, but I can start from mine and try to understand. Um. Better what's yeah. around me and um and start start conversations about it mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah and actually I'm, I'm thinking what would be next because i gave voice i i tried to give voice to stories with my own but maybe mm -hmm. i was thinking that the next step would be what if i reach out to um, artists, uh, musicians, women, immigrants, women in music to uh, write for me or write uh, duets or write, like to, I'm, I'm still thinking, but I'm thinking about a volume two of uh, Migration Tales. That's the, yeah. um, so giving another, arriving to the same subject, but arriving from a different angle. Exciting. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm so happy you're doing this. This is, this is awesome. And we'll, Thank you. everybody will follow you. All the links will be in the description. So Thank you so much. I, I'd love to hear what advice would you give young aspiring women or just musicians who are just starting out? What's, what's, and I know you've been teaching a lot, but what, advice, yeah. what's the most important advice? Um, I wish I were for myself more fearless. Like sometimes I sit on ideas for too long mm -hmm. or I choose things for myself. Like trust yourself, trust your gut and go for it. Um, and I think that maybe younger generation are already a little bit like that. I don't know. I have this feeling that they are already <laughs> more like you know, um, doing and, um, yeah, I would say trust your gut and, and do what you have to. Yeah. That's to awesome. accomplish what you want. I have another question because you came from the classical world and then you ventured mm -hmm. into like jazz and composition and other styles. Um, do you, I mean, that's, it happens more and more, but it was not a, a logical uh, travel, right? How, how do you? See, yeah. Um, how do you glue them together? With me, it started um, a little bit bef like it's not that it was a one day decision or like I did. Um, when in between my undergrad and, and my master, I did a postgraduate course in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And so I lived uh, in Spain um, at the time and I started going to some jam sessions and just jump, literally playing whatever. I was like reckless. That was, th that was it, being reckless and go. <laughs> And um, I think that that was the time in which I was like, ooh, this is great. I feel great. I feel I can be myself. And But still, I did. it was just a taste, you know? It was just like... And also, I loved... I think the biggest thing for me with music is the communication with other musicians, mm -hmm. you know? It's like... Um, it's a language. And I feel like you, you can talk this language with so many different people, even if right. you might not have anything in common to see it. Um, um, so that experience was the one that was like, okay, I'm putting a step into something new. Mm -hmm. And when I got back and I started doing my master in my hometown, they opened the jazz department in the conservatory. So I started hanging with 
with the jazz kids. And actually, I met um, Glauco Venier. He's a pianist and the head of the department in my hometown. And he basically had this day long class on Monday in which we would like transcribe and listen to music and do some piano all together with entire jazz class. It was not big, you know, it's a small conservatory. Um, but I started going to these Monday uh, lessons and I integrated into my um, master drums. I, I could manage to do some electives. And so I did drums, I did um, just piano. So I did uh, arranging. So I started doing these lessons because finally they were also in my school. And, uh, and also for my thesis, I did uh, the uh, American minimalism. So I focused more like on Philip Glass and uh, Steve Reich. So it was like a little bit of a lot of American uh, music right. and, uh, and art. Um, so I think it was, you know, it was a process that started Right, little really. by little. And then after that, I went to Banff, which it was still like kind of new uh, to all this world. And, and there, uh, they definitely welcomed my being coming from a different uh, background. And mm -hmm. there were so many kids that like everyone had a different experience, age, um, um, country of origin. So it was like that really like just gave me the hint this is what you want to do so try to go for it but it mm -hmm. was definitely a process that took you know uh, a bunch of years before i really like committed to it <laughs> mm. awesome you mentioned a little about uh, community earlier and and also just mm -hmm. now um can you talk a little bit about the, the value for how do you see a community it's so important <laughs> Mostly in in a city that is so, like I come from a small town again, where it might be easier to feel connected to mm -hmm. the people around you, and um, just because physically things are easier to reach or people are easier to reach and meet, and uh, and when I first uh, moved to New York, it was kind of like emptying, like I felt really lonely and I still sometimes feel lonely as probably everyone we all do um, but I think one of the biggest reason to be here is actually being connected to the environment here because um, it can really like inspire you in your life and in your um, artistic search. And even when you don't have your own gigs and you're like, oh, I'm not playing enough, I'm not doing it. You go out, you go listen to some of these friends that are part of your community and, and it's so inspiring and nurturing and, um, and you can learn literally from anyone around you. So, for me, mostly in the last year, community has been um, the center um, to not feel lost in what I'm doing and, uh, and in my daily life. Mm -hmm. and, and in a city that it's not an easy city. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. It, it gives a lot of opportunities, but it's exhausting and it's very isolating. Um, so yeah, I think it's, I'm really grateful. I, I got to experience, like I, I am part of a community. So yeah, yeah. lucky. Awesome. <laughs> um, how do you balance the, the staying true to your artistic vision and meeting commercial expectations? Like I need to pay rent as well. Right. How do you <laughs> balance? Or I mean, maybe you don't. No, How do we it. balance? That's the question. We I ask that question continuously to myself, and sometimes uh -huh. I tell myself, "Oh my God, I need balance. <laughs> I need more." I feel like we live. I live in search for that balance. Mm. Um, I think 
what my purpose right now, like I'm trying to change a little bit my in my head uh, from this year on. Um, I would like to find artistic purposes or close to artistic purposes um, in all the things I do. So if I mm. am teaching, if I am playing a wedding, like I have to do those things because those things really pay the rent while my project, thank, thankfully I got a grant, but most of the time when you do your own project and you're not already extremely famous, it's very hard to, to actually survive with that project. You, I have been mostly spending money on my project and making money from other sources playing other people project or teaching or um, or playing like this corporate uh, and with as a violinist I can literally go from you know pop music to um, um, Latin I mean probably pop is the least I like but <laughs> so that, that's the first I said but I think <laughs> what I'm trying to do for this year is um, if I say yes to something that not necessarily um, fit them, you know, there are usually three boxes of like, uh, what is it like, money is good, um, the music is good, and it's yeah. a good, yeah, inspiration. And the people, yeah. But career. like to f yeah. to actually find that those positive box, even if it might not be perfect. Yeah. And. Um, and be happier with what I do. And I rather do things with people um, than, you know, than being just like um, waiting uh, or saying no because maybe the money is not enough or something like that, right. which it happens a lot here, but usually for other musicians project, that's what you do. Like we, we do this for each other. They did it for mm -hmm. me. I wish I could have paid all my friends, musicians that participated in my projects much more than I did one day. <laughs> you know, one of the projects I saw is, is this little plastic puppy, um, <laughs> a planter. And yeah. those videos, get, t tell me a little bit about that because th those are the, the cutest thing ever. So during the pandemic, I started realizing that I was craving creativity in different ways, like not necessarily always related to music. Um, and I've always been a fan of stop motion and anime and, you know, cartoons, or I always liked all that world. Uh -huh. And... Um, so one of the projects that literally started as a, I want to do something creative without judgment and is good the first. Like I'm not gonna do crazy edits or it was like, okay, I'm gonna create some little stories and I'm not gonna think about the story before. I'm literally creating it while I do it in which I found Ernesto. Ernesto was, is this plastic dog that um, my friend Tim Norton, <laughs> he's, a, he's a bassist friend. And when he got married, uh, I went to his wedding and there was a little box of gifts for the um, guests. And Ernesto was inside this box. Oh. <laughs> so it was funny because it's just like a random thing that you get in a, <laughs> at a wedding party. And Ernesto, I was like, hmm. What can I do with you? I really wanted to have a dog at the time and I didn't have one. So um, I was like, if I make a little stories, then I can also play some music. Like I, I have to do all the components of the, of the video. I have to make the music. I'll have to make a story speaking. I'll have to record myself. So I was like, this is perfect. I have so many hours. I was very, it was very hard for me to cop, to focus on other things. So. To, I started making I started making maybe one or two videos and then I was like this is I'm gonna try to make a series and I'm gonna try to see what kind of story I can tell 
And it's funny because to make 30 second video in stop motion, it was taking me like two, three hours just to do the video part because I was literally using my phone. I like, didn't even use, I didn't even have a, an app application that does that. I was just like, then, 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 <laughs> and then put in the pictures and then recording the music, um, different layers, piano, mm -hmm. voice, uh, percussion, viola, violin, and um, good the first, never retouched um, unless it was a major thing, but I don't remember really being like, there, that there have been problems. But that has been, yeah, part of my pandemic uh, days. And it was actually really helpful to stay uh, focused mm -hmm. on, on mm -hmm. something positive, you know? Awesome. And I had, and the fact that I had like few friends that really loved it, I was like, yeah, they are all looking forward for the next Ernesto adventure. I think people are still waiting for the next Ernesto adventure. It's just that now, you know, now Ernesto, you have a real dog. Oh, now I have a real dog. <laughs> yeah, to go for Ernesto. Is Ernesto must be upset now, right? Yeah, I actually, he's in the living room. Um, <laughs> yeah, he got glasses, you know, he's, he's fine. <laughs> awesome. but one one day I'll, I'll upgrade my gear and uh i would love to be able to do a like yeah a do music it. video you know like one of my music uh, and and do make it. a video with uh, a story with ernesto it would be so yes. fun oh my god yeah thanks for reminding me about that i haven't thought about ernesto in a little bit <laughs> yes yeah that stuff was great I recommend everyone to <laughs> check it out. Uh, it's the best. Maybe you have to scroll down your Instagram time. Right? Yeah. A bit. But, there is, yeah. There, it's also, it's on YouTube, actually. I'm not okay. big on YouTube, but I, I put it there. I did uh, all awesome. that. You can, you can watch it in like eight minutes, 10 episodes. They're oh, all 25, 25 yeah. seconds each. <laughs> very, very cool. <laughs> um yeah well it was a pleasure to talking to you uh thank you so much for having me it's really fun being here at the podcast and being part of the project i mean yeah yeah, yeah. that's the other part playing that we on, released on the, the same album. day and i played yes. in your album and yes. yeah i'm really grateful for these community collaborations yes and we'll we'll do more of it yep yeah. i hope so, so Thank you and talk Thank soon. Thank you. As I conclude this episode of Vivi Talks, I want to express my sincere gratitude for joining me in this musical journey. I hope you enjoyed exploring the stories and experiences of the incredible female musicians on my album. To stay updated on our latest episodes, subscribe to Vivi Talks on your favorite podcast platform. Connect with me on social media through Viverture. And please check out my album type of thing. A musical exchange featuring 100 female musicians to empower female cacao farmers of the Runga State Park in Congo. It's about more than just music. It's about making a positive impact in the world. Your support is part of that journey. So thank you once again for tuning in. Until next time, keep celebrating the power of music. And let's continue to amplify the voices of remarkable women in the industry. Stay inspired, stay empowered, and keep the music flowing. With love and gratitude, till soon.